Hi, Hans Lemerson here, and today I'm going to show off an amazing creation of mine, a multifunction logic gate. Okay, the purpose of this creation is instead of wiring up a, bun a bunch of different logic gates and then switching between them, like having a bunch of AND gates and then uh, OR gates separately, I decided to combine as many of them into one uh, unit as I could. This gives me a multi-function logic gate, a logic gate which can perform more than one function. Uh, it's controlled at three points, uh, this wire, this wire, and this one. Uh, this one is a little special, I'll get into it later. Uh, basically, what these uh, wires do is they control inversion of either the inputs or the output. Uh, this makes use of something called De Morgan's Law, which lets you convert between different kinds of logic gates. This control panel here uh, is set up to control, well, yeah, to control which function is being used. Currently, uh, the AND function is active. Uh, ignore the lower, uh, the ones written lower down for now. Uh, just pay attention to the top ones. This light means AND. Okay. These are the inputs. In red and pink is the A input. In yellow and orange is the B input. I have the torches uh, set up, or I, yeah, I have the, the input set up so that it's showing you all four possible combinations. Both on, A on, but B off, B on, A off, and both of them off. Now, with the AND logical function, the output over there will only turn on in cases where both A and B are on. So that's the top two, uh, the top two inputs, uh, which is why just the top one is on. Now, another function, uh, the next function is NAND. Did I hit it? There we go. NAND, n negative AND, or not AND. It's the opposite of that. You remember how all four, or how just how just the top the two torches were, or the just the top torches on the output were lit. Now, it's the opposite. The top torches are off, but the bottom ones are all on. Uh, because it it takes and and then it does the opposite of that. You can also think of it as uh, the output is on uh, when either of the inputs are off. If that's off, or that's off, or that... Yeah, if, if A is off or B is off, the output is on. That's the NAND uh, logical function. Now, let's go to OR. OR is where the output is on if just one of the torches is on. It's similar to NAND in that you see that three torches are on, but it's flipped around a bit. Uh, so it, you have you have the top the top one is on because both are both are on both inputs are on, but the middle two on the output are also those are also on because it only requires that just a single of the inputs be on for the the output to be on. Then the last logical function here is NOR. Yeah, it takes a little time to adjust due to how the control mechanism is set up. NOR, it's negative OR, or it's also, it can also be thought of as neither. So it's only on when both of the tor when both of the inputs are off. If any input, if there's any ON going in, the result is off. So, those are the four basic logic functions. But, uh, and those are controlled just by these two wires. However, I set this up so that I could have a second set of functions. And flipping this switch, uh, I didn't want to have a bank of eight buttons here, so I'm just doing four buttons used twice. Flipping this switch gives, brings me to the second set of functions that this gate can do. What this switch does 
is it disables the B input. Uh, this line of wire ru runs across here and turns off all the torches that were transmitting the B input into the uh, yeah, into the multifunction logic gate. So this results in s this gives us some interesting results. Uh, the first and most useful is that this can perform an, a basic inversion function. We're now going to be looking at the bottom row here. So currently it's set to not A. And so uh, the output here is not A. Uh, you see A has two tr the top two lit and the bottom two off. The output, that's the opposite of that. The top two are off, the bottom two are lit. So now we go to the A function. A is just, well, A goes in, A comes out. It's not all that useful because, well, you could just run a wire from the in from the input to the output and it would work the same. But the point here is that this is a multifunction logic gate. One device can do lots of different things. Now we're going to get into territory of even greater dubiousness with the false function. False? It's barely even a function. All it does is say, I don't care what the inputs are. I'm off. And it's just all the torches are, torches are off. Then it's opposite. True. True is... Yeah, they're just on. The function is... The output is on. Kind of stupid, but... Uh, I, I hear it has some use, but... But anyway, it really just came along with the ride for when I added not A and A to the functions. So this only does, it, so it has eight function, my multifunction logic gate can do eight things, but only about five or six of them are actually useful. But it's still cool. Uh, the reason I made this is because I, how, you may notice that this is a somewhat large construction. However, what would, what's even bigger than that is wiring lots of devices together. I'll get up here. You can s get an idea of the size of this device. It's fairly substantial, but then look back this way. Look at the size of the wiring. All everything from this point on is just uh, me put putting redstone uh, wires down to get from the from the inputs over here to the output or to the, to the gate and then from the gate to the output. Wiring takes up a huge amount of room, and it's something you want to do as little as possible. So I built this multifunction logic gate, so I would only have to do this set of wiring once. And, and I can just control which function I do, uh, which function I'm using, as opposed to building individual gates, uh, like a set of ands, a set of ors, a set of, uh, a set of nots, and so on, and doing wires for all of those, which would be massive. <clears throat> the price is a little bit of speed, but I think it's worth it, because uh, really massive uh, constructions, you start getting uh, some loss of... Yeah, for really large uh, contraptions, you get some loss in speed due to the fact that you need to use signal repeaters, which uh, slow down a signal a little bit when you're transmitting along a long line. And that's my... That's one creation over here, so I'll leave other stuff for another video. Oh wait, actually, something I want to show off with this is another amazing creation is the control unit here. Uh, you may notice that its basic function is I press a button and a light tur and a light turns on corresponding to which one I pressed. What this requires is that there be memory units back here, that's what I have in orange and yellow, which remember which was the last button pressed. What I, but the interesting thing di I did here is that I have four of them all next to each other with no spacing. 
Normally you'd have to space these apart because they'd interfere with each other, but I was able to figure out a way using repeaters and alternating patterns to get them very narrow so that uh, so that I could have four buttons on four blocks instead of having to do one, two, three, four, like that, which could get large and annoying. As it is, it's kind of large itself, but I thought it was pretty neat and useful. So as you can tell, my the general theme here is compaction, making things compact, not wasting any space, even though, technically speaking, the world of Minecraft is infinite. Okay, Hans Lemerson, signing out. <laughs>